Welcome to Life Source Church. Subscribe to our podcast on iTunes or SoundCloud. Welcome to the Wednesday edition of our Life Source Church podcast on Money Works. I am Drew Landgren, a pastoral ministry intern here at Life Source Church. Today, we're going to be talking about prosperity preachers. The accusation that churches are just out for the money. It's going to be a fun topic to talk about today. <laughs> Your favorite, I'm sure. Um, not only that, also, how much money should we be giving? And I'm joined here today by Pastor Walt Graham. Uh, starting us off, I wonder if some people who hear you're talking about God wanting us to enjoy all of our money, like you've been talking about the past couple days with Matt, um, might think you're saying something similar to one of those TV preachers. You say, you know, God wants everyone to be rich. Um, Yeah, so, I mean, it's, uh, (laughs) I I could get that. I can understand that. You know, you've probably all, everybody's probably seen the, the guy on TV who says, you know, God wants you, it's his will for you to be rich, and, mm. and what you do is you've got to plant a seed, you know, and, and, and that seed is sending me $100. And yes. if you send me $100 in my ministry, then God mm. will make you rich. He'll give you 10 times back. And, and we know that's unbiblical. Mm. Uh, the Bible doesn't teach any such thing. The Bible teaches that there are times when we may be doing well, but there could very well be times where we don't have a lot. Apostle Paul talked about that. Remember he said... That, you know, I've learned how to have a lot and be happy, and I've learned how to have a little and be happy. And oh, that God, yeah. through it all, has provided all of my needs. So, yeah, I get that. And um, people tend to think, you know, it's, it's a kind of a cliche that you go to church, what do they want? Money, money, money. That's right. They want your money. Mm-hmm. And, um, and the reality is, is the church often does ask for money. Mm-hmm. Because just like it costs people money to pay their uh, heating bills, it costs the church money to pay its heating bills. Mm. And, and, of course, then you go beyond that, all the ministry. And so it's not unusual for the church to be asking. Um, I think the real key is that we have to, to make sure that uh, if the church we're going to is mm. asking for money, mm. uh, that the church is based on the Bible and not just what somebody says about the Bible, right? That's mm. really what yeah, no. God says uh, about the money, so that you would know if you're giving that the money is actually being used not to make somebody rich, uh, richer, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but to accomplish the work of God. Yes. So, do you ever get concerns that when you're preaching about money, stewardship, um, that you'll hear that same old question here all the time? All they want is our right. money. Yeah. Yeah, it does happen. I'll be honest with you, over the years it hasn't happened too much uh, because I think most of the people who are here really have an understanding that we really are preaching the Word of God. Mm-hmm. We are trying to do what God wants us to do. Mm-hmm. I think it's, it's someone maybe who's newer, right, and they've had other experiences come in, they could start to feel that way. But uh, I said this on Sunday during the sermon, but it, it is true, is that when we really teach and preach on money, mm-hmm. not primarily so we can get more money, mm-hmm. because... That's just like you know, fundraising, yeah. right? Because so you were just saying we had yeah. to and we're not raise money, keep the lights on, yeah. keep the building. Right. We, and we aren't typically it. into that, okay? We're not looking to get something from people. We're looking to give something to people. Mm. And that something is a perspective on life, a perspective on money that changes everything. Mm. Be, and the reality is, is that when people get right what God says in his word about money, right? they understand where it comes from, they begin to understand what they're supposed to do with it, part of which is worshiping God with their giving, mm. uh, being generous as they are able uh, for the work of God. Money is not a big issue. Yes. And since we try not to talk about money here all the time, we try to, to focus some time like we are right now, really mm. teach people what God says, and then let God work in their lives. Mm. And when... When God gets a hold of somebody's heart, he gets a hold of their wallet, too. Mm. And so we don't really have to stress out about that and keep asking for money all the time. Yes. So is there any truth to that accusation? And if someone, say, asks you that same question Sunday or this Wednesday, I'd Friday. Say, I said, go listen to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, because we, we did address it here. Uh, mm. Like I said, obviously it happens places. Uh, stereotypes like that occur because there is some truth to them, you know, and that does happen places. And, uh, but like I said, our approach is not to be always asking people for money, um, but rather to teach them what God says about money and then let him work in their lives. 
and then only on occasion do we come and ask for money for something specific. And, mm -hmm. and, and really, at that point, we're presenting it as an opportunity. Yes. Not something that we have to have to stay open, but it's an opportunity to be involved in what God's doing. So one of the verses we looked at together on Sunday uh, says, Be ready to give. Now, everyone wants to know, how much money do we have to give? Okay, so I, I'll say what you got to do. What you got to do is you got to make sure you're here on Sundays because I'm going to talk about that in one of these coming <laughs> weeks. No, the, uh, um, the Bible does talk about how much we should give. And the, the simplest answer is to say, you need to give as much as you believe God wants you to give. Okay? And that's really not a cop-out answer because that is what God talks about. talks about giving generously from the heart. Uh, the Bible does, though, talk about a proportional kind of giving where we set a percentage and then if God gives us a lot, we still give that percentage. If God gives us a little, we still give that percentage. And when we try to decide what that percentage is, we go back from the very beginning of the Bible and we find that they gave a tithe, the first 10%. Um, the Bible doesn't require Christians to give a tithe, doesn't require them to do that, but it does say that they need to pursue God. God, my money's yours. I want to honor you with all of it. I want to start off by worshiping you, by giving to you. How much do you want me to give? And, and then that's what they need to do. And we'll be talking more about uh, the specifics of that as we go through this series. Yes. So what practical steps would you recommend to us as Christians uh, who really want to get it right when it comes to our money? All right. Well, I think um, it starts off with, it, it didn't may not sound that practical, but it starts off with in your heart and mind, sitting down or standing, or at some point you find, say, okay, God, you're the one who provided all this money, and I do want to use it the way that you want me to. And that, um, God will answer that prayer. He'll respond to that and begin to help us know. But if we don't have that settled, all this other stuff doesn't really matter. Mm. Okay. So we need to settle that first. That, and I think that's very practical. And then, that is, we need to sit down and look, what do we really have? What is God providing for us? And, and as we get in the Word, and then we start talking about giving, spending, and, um, boy, so many things. I, I think one of the, the, the most practical things that someone could do if they sat down and said, I want to get my money right uh, after giving would be to say, am I in debt? Mm. You know, where am I in debt? Where am I having to serve people instead of God with my money? And begin to make plans to get out of that. And we'll probably talk about that some in the weeks to come as well. Uh, so practical steps. Settle it with God first, uh, and then lay it all, like put it all out on the table, and start saying, okay, God, what do you want me to do with this? Mm. And when you have questions about it, go find someone who knows what the Bible says, ask them, and, uh, but keep working on it. Yes. And it may not be perfect overnight. Don't worry about that. Just make sure your heart's in the right place. I'd also add, it doesn't matter how old you are. All right. Um, I took the financial peace series, which Matt referenced yesterday, uh, I went through when I was 15, 16 years old, and that's when I started. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, all the glory goes to the Lord. I feel like, of course, the Lord could change it, but I've been able to manage my finances in a productive, uh, hmm. fruitful way. Do you enjoy all of it? <clears throat> no, I do not. It's not <laughs> okay, easy. You've got to work on that, right? <clears throat> yes. Um, for me, I guess the hardest part would be being joyful, uh, not only just giving, but um, what you talked about Sunday, enjoying our money. That was kind of a new concept for me that I've never really thought about. Yeah. Well, can you see how the idea of connecting with God about this, mm. that if it's all God's and you're all trying to use it all, that every part of it then, even if it's money you wish you didn't have to spend, you start to say, wow, God's doing something here, right? And mm. you can, it can begin to change how you look at it. So. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you for joining me, Pastor Walt. And thank you, uh, listeners, viewers, for joining us today. Tomorrow... Pastor Dave Landsgren will be hosting our podcast as we continue our discussion of Money Works um, and also what God wants us to understand about our money and what we're supposed to do with it. Cool.